Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before you begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories down in the comments. And let's get started. The first story is... Two Idiots Whenever I stop by after work to complete my grocery shopping, I'm frequently requested for assistance. Other than Aldi's, it doesn't matter which food store you shop at. I'll admit that most people are kind and understanding about the confusion, and I've become accustomed to it by now. Sadly, though, it isn't always the case. Whenever I'm strolling down an aisle, scanning the shelves to see what I might or might not desire, one of my fellow shoppers will nearly always ask me for assistance. These days, the majority of them say sorry and act civilly. I will genuinely assist them, or assist them in finding an employee if I'm familiar with the store I'm at at that moment. When someone's impolite, I usually just ignore them and carry on with my day, and they leave in a huff. Like several of you, I've had people get upset with me, but only once to the point where I had to clarify the situation to a floor manager. They had tried to chastise me for being impolite, but I ended up talking to the manager of the store, who told them both how foolish they were. This is a result of my professional attire. Many of the uniform shirts worn by the guard firm I work for are gray. The only time I've noticed this is since they started wearing our more recent polo-style shirts, which just have a little logo over the left half of the chest. A sizable, easily noticeable patch was located on the left sleeve of the former clothes. My black work clothes and my charcoal gray work pants finished that outfit. Apparently, a lot of people stop me to ask for assistance because they think I'm some kind of management. This typically occurs for me at Hy-Vee. The worst was when a junior manager and a random Karen both believed that I worked there. It began like most of my shopping excursions after work do. With my own coat tucked over the bars, I'm walking the aisles looking for what I want for a few meals and occasionally picking out items to add to my large, conspicuous shopping cart. I don't have any blatant or evident grocery shop gear on me or in my basket. After approximately 20 minutes, I feel like someone is staring at me really intensively as I walk down the pasta and rice aisle. I also notice a strange woman standing at the end of the aisle, glaring at me with her arms crossed and tapping her foot. I had no prior experience with her, I'm at least 30 feet away, and there's plenty of space to move past me. I barely gave her another glance until I catch her moving slightly up the aisle, tapping her foot more loudly and making that annoying <clears throat> sound that makes you want to box their ears in order to teach them etiquette. I looked over, bewildered, and made the mistake of making eye contact. She stomped up to me at that moment and tried to glare me down while standing with her hands on her hips. She's beginning to intrude on my personal space, and since I don't like it when strangers enter my zone without warning, I go behind my cart to put something in between us. Apparently, this just makes the situation worse. Her deadly look widens, and her large pupils, flaring nostrils, and even the pounding of her feet let me know that she is getting ready to scream. I swung my cart around and went somewhere else, deciding against fighting off an enraged harpy like a Greek hero would have been more appropriate. Before I can turn around, she takes my trolley, forcing me to face her. Now, usually, I could talk my way out of it and maintain my composure. However, I'm worn out after working a 12-hour shift and handling issues at work, such as having to teach a new guard who's a technophobe and physically lost his way while walking in a straight line. My mental and emotional energy are at a low point, and I'm a little irritable. I lost a little bit of my temper. I told her to go bother someone else, get out of my way, give up my dang cart, and leave me alone. For a moment, I wrench my cart free, but she snatches it back and so starts the act. 
She literally screams and then begins to yell that I must assist her because it's my responsibility and that if I don't apologize and follow her instructions, she will go get a manager. I tell her that, one, I don't work there, that I can get lost, and I don't have to do squat. She yanks my cart towards me and leaves while yelling that she's going to go get a manager. Now that she's gone, I take advantage of my freedom to go shopping. My assumption was that the manager would look for a disgruntled worker and discover no one on staff was at blame, making the whole issue irrelevant. Apparently, I was gravely mistaken. After ten more minutes of my buying spree, Karen and a junior manager suddenly charge up the aisle. The junior manager is looking irritated and is already giving me the sidelong glance. She looks triumphant and vengeful. As they approach, I roll my eyes because I already know what will happen. After that, Karen starts screaming loudly about how I refused to assist her, was so impolite, and need to be fired or punished. I simply begin to shake my head. Because the store was on my way home from work, I frequently shopped there, and I'd had seen this person previously. I assumed he would identify me and warn the woman to get out of my way. Rather, the little goes ahead and humiliates me, berating me for failing to assist a client, threatening to put a bad mark on my performance assessment, and requiring me to clock out and go home. It goes without saying that I was losing my cool quickly, and that I was thinking of telling him exactly what my drill instructors called colorful euphemisms of encouragement for performance. I fixed them both with my best. You're both an idiot's expression for a minute. Unlike everyone else in the store, I'm not dressed in a uniform. I'm sporting a name badge that features my photo, name, and the name of the firm I work for as a guard. My ID is on a lanyard with the company name on it and a different color than the ones they use, and I don't look like anyone else in the store. I responded, no, glaring directly into each of their eyes. I owe neither of you anything. I don't follow directions from strangers or random unpleasant women who bother me while I'm shopping. I know it won't help me, but I'm mainly able to control myself instead of lighting them up. With her lips hanging open, Karen gazed at her gaping maw like a horrifying deep-sea fish drowning, its eyes all blank and buggy, plucked from the slimy depths. The junior manager begins to flush, is positively stunned. He seems ready to unload, and Karen's wearing a somewhat smug expression. If I don't cut them off, I'm sure they'll double-team me. I cut short his brewing tirade before he could do his impression of Mount Vesuvius and bury all of us in the ash of his dumb idiocy. I gesture for him to examine my uniform. Examine carefully. I asked him whether anyone in Hy-Vee was wearing gray polyester polo shirts with the name of my company on the front. He seemed momentarily astonished. Subsequently, I inquire if he's previously witnessed me at work. The volcano that was forming has vanished, as far as I can tell, and the hamster is now turning the wheel. I asked him whether this looked like it mentioned Hy-Vee anywhere after I showed him my ID badge. He bursts out of his bewilderment and realizes he's made a mistake. Rather of offering an apology and ordering Karen to go away, he continues to act foolishly. He then accuses me of not being helpful and makes me seem to be doing his work for him. I clarify that I don't have to, especially if someone's bothering and being impolite to me while I'm shopping, and he should be helping people, not me. Well, he didn't like it when I told him that instead of making a big deal out of it, he could have just simply helped her, sent her on her way, and then come find whoever was causing the problem. I see the shop manager cruise down the aisle because someone told him someone was yelling and making a scene, and I'm going to make for the customer service counter, find the store manager, and ask those bozos to leave me alone. I waved him over while attempting to contain my rage as I didn't realize this until after the issue had been fixed. 
Having shown here quite a bit and occasionally striking up a conversation with the staff while shopping, this guy recognized me right away. He gives me a kind greeting and inquires as to how he may assist me. I then describe how they are both bothering me, pointing to Karen and his dumb staff. To stop others from interjecting, he raises the stop sign till I finish. After giving his wayward junior a very irritated look, he turns to instruct him to wait in his office. Karen has harassed other customers in the past, so he orders her to leave the business. She attempted to fight and squabble, but he cut her off and wouldn't allow her to place the blame for her poor behavior anywhere other than on herself. Before she left, he had to threaten her with the police. After I told him it wasn't a huge thing and he apologized, he walked with me to the checkout to make sure Karen had really departed. Because of her misbehavior, she reportedly received a two-month suspension from all Hy-Vee stores in the area. When I visited next week, the store manager discovered me while I was shopping and informed me that the employee had been messed up by the numbers despite being promoted to a junior manager at this company's request. I accepted his apology for the mess nevertheless. No offense, no hurt. It seems that Junior screw-up suspension that evening and subsequent firing the following week was the straw that broke the camel's back. Despite the odd mishap, the most of my trips there went smoothly, so I continued to shop there. God, yeah, this is just by far one of the worst situations you could find yourself in while just trying to chill after a long, hard 12-hour day at work. Man, can't even buy stinking groceries in peace, people. Come on. You know, <laughs> like, the grocery store is the kind of place where you'd think everyone would just go, get what they need, and get out. You know, like, all there is to buy there, at most grocery stores anyway, is just a bunch of food items. Like, everyone needs to eat. Everyone needs food. They can come and get what you want to get, and then just get out of there and go somewhere else. If you want to go create a problem and create some drama, go do it at, like, a clothing store or something you know something where somebody's gonna actually have some personal i don't know involvement in their choice of being at that location don't come to the grocery store where everyone is obligated to go and then start causing trouble and a headache for everyone come on if you want to be annoying at least go be annoying in the right places the next story is Smug Son of the Veteran Demands That I Pay HOA Fines An HOA run by a smug person is always bad. The local HOA that I'm constantly harassed by is run by a man. I would even say he's an old man, because if he says that I'm too young at 30, then I will also go to extremes, who believes that if his 96-year-old father is a veteran, then he, as a son also deserves respect. Don't get me wrong, I respect veterans, I understand how to treat them and why I should treat them that way, but I don't think anyone should have privileges because their relative, even if they're very close, has honor and respect. They didn't do anything. As soon as I try to argue with this guy, he immediately turns on the same records. He says I'm too young to have such dialogues, or when I start telling him my complaints, he says he's in a hurry and he has to go, and I, young, allegedly don't respect the veterans because I don't respect the son of a veteran. I tried to explain that the fact that he's the son of a veteran does not allow him to find me on behalf of the HOA, especially when I'm not even a member of the HOA. I also said that he has no right to behave like a bitch, no matter what he comes up with. More about the fines. He fined me for the wrong colors of my private property. He fined me for a crooked mailbox. He fined me every day. It all depended on his mood, but it happened that I received fines for 10 days in a row. Update. I went to court to have the court cancel all these fines, and I would also like this guy to forget about me. I'll write to you if there are any new updates. Update 2. He's trying to drag the case out. Guess what he's telling the court? That's right. He tells everyone that his father is a veteran, so he, as his son, deserves special treatment. My lawyer is a little shocked by this behavior. 
Update 3. Congratulations! We won the court case, and now all the fines have been cancelled, and now this neighbor, aka son of a veteran, has no right to arbitrarily enter my private property, now on an official level. He also paid me compensation. The next story is... Beach Taco Drama After summer break, my sister, 14F, who just completed the 8th grade, will begin her high school career at her ideal institution. Like my parents, I'm incredibly proud of her and have supported her through every stressful moment. In the last few weeks of school, my sister's teacher and our father organized a full day of fun at a beautiful beach in my city. Aside from Starbucks and a few vending machines, there weren't many restaurants nearby, so they also set up a taco food truck that had been previously rented out for school events. My parents were carpooling, so there wasn't room in the car for me to go, and I didn't feel like going because it wasn't for me, but it was okay because I'm getting ready to move out into my own place in about a year, so my parents said that this was sort of like a practice round of me living alone. Even though I've spent a lot of time alone at home, this was far more enjoyable than having to wait a few hours for someone to return from work. I carried out my typical grown-up tasks, cooking lunch, making a shopping list, feeding the dogs, and doing laundry. You know how it is. The dogs would be outside, which is the sole distinction between this and my single life. My dad helped me go to the store where I bought dinner supplies and pop because, well, let's be honest, I'm a major soda junkie. My family was gone from 9 to 10 a.m. until about 3 to 4 p.m. When I got back, my sister had just finished showering after spending the entire day at the beach, and she informed me of what had happened. Opening scene. The beach. As I previously indicated, the reason the beach they visited is so lovely is that, in contrast to other beach areas, there are no homeless people living there because of their safety measures, which essentially consist of those jagged benches and a bridge that's only suitable for driving across. No bikes are allowed. This was also a result of the beach's somewhat snobbish location. Because of where we live and what follows, it's shocking to hear that my dad has never seen a whiter neighborhood in our state. However, it gets worse. Scene. Students and taco truck arrive. Like any other class nowadays, my sister's was made up of students of mixed races from a variety of cultural backgrounds and family generations. The only two things my sister's school did to make it all-inclusive were teach my sister Hebrew and allow students to study other religions. They were extremely clear about not making anyone feel inferior to anyone. It actually isn't, sho it actually isn't shocking to see a group of children of various races hanging out on the beach with their parents in the modern world. Things were all calm and enjoyable in the sun during the summer with high school in the future and until the taco truck arrived and immediately began gaining business with the parents, students, and teachers with excellent meals. I tried that same truck's cuisine during one school function I visited. It's bomb. Step left, please. The police. Enter the Karens at stage left. Two police officers approached the group that had helped organize this day my sister's teacher, our father, and others, and they seem to be having a great time. The men in blue claim that there have been complaints from nearby residents about a food truck making loud noises and serving food without a permit. In my city, you can obtain a permit to sell food if you have a tent, table, or grill. However, if you operate a food truck, you don't require a permit unless it's parked in a park or close to a busy place, such as a hospital or library. And a complaint about children making noise at the beach on a weekend when other people are also there? The teacher was merely attempting to identify the source of the issue and provide an explanation when the police became irritated with her for challenging their logic. The policeman was yelling at the man who was trying to leave a positive impression on his students, as my dad reported. But my mother was not going to give up on this with a whiny bitch cry. Oh no. My mom is a small-time monarch. Stage right. Mom. My sister and I have always loved theatrics and the dramatic, 
and our mother inherited this trait from her mother. We adore both true crime and trivial matters, even if they're simply tiny, tiny guilt-tripping trivialities. Enter my mother, who's watching and listening to what's happening as the police threaten to have this taco truck removed or their beach would be like other beaches that has some other homeless people, and New York City. No offense to New Yorkers, I hear it's nice. So, do you want to tell these kids they won't be fed? She asks the cops after turning to face the children and observing that just 5% of the students had received tacos. When he finally gave in and let the kids eat, the policemen stammer and try to clarify that that's not what he meant. However, the truck will be locked up as soon as the last child finishes his taco. A line was made. Kids ate delectable tacos. Then the truck packed up and drove off. After that, for obvious reasons, everyone was in a bad mood and they all packed up and left the beach. Scene's Conclusion To be honest, I'm more irritated by the animosity my sister's class received following a beach party. It was impossible to find out if there were regulations and even if there had been, someone would have brought it up without phoning the police or they could have explained things courteously. In addition, my parents noted that although they were rather antagonistic towards some of the parents, they became less, I will cuff you right now, as soon as the white parents arrived. Oh man, I really thought that was going to have a nicer ending than that, but that's truly a shame. I'm glad to hear that everyone got their tacos at least, but yeah, you know. some There's just some places around the world where people will just, they'll just be like that. They'll just be annoying for... The sake of being annoying, I guess. They're not occupied on the weekend and hate their life in the world, so they're going to ruin someone else's fun to have a little vengeance and swing their little play of false power around. I don't know. It's completely stupid, but I mean, what can you do, I guess? It's just the stories like this just show how ridiculous situations can be around the world sometimes. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment.